welcome everyone to GeoHug. Uh, so before we kick off today's session, I'd just like to take this time to acknowledge the traditional lands which we're all coming from today. I'm here on the beautiful lands of the Gadigal of the people of the Aurora Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and future. So I'm so happy to have Andre Ricalde joining us today. So for, with many years of experience, Andre specialises in the process to deliver solid and sound strategies related to social performance in the mining sector. He's established a rep reputable consultancy practice in Toronto, serving different companies and organisations related to the mining sector operating in Latin America. And he'll be sharing his insights today about if we need a social license in exploration activities. So it is going to be wonderful hearing from him today. I hope you all enjoy it. Please use the chat. You'll have the chance to jump off mute and we'll be opening up the floor at the end. And yes, thank you so much, Andre, for joining. It's wonderful having you. Okay, well, this is the title, Social License Temporary Mining Exploration. A social license, uh, I will, there are four topics during this presentation. What, what is the beginning of this? Why, why it makes sense for talking about social license, the business case for social license? This is the first one. What is the technical and social processes at the field level that social license seems to make sense? And the third one, how to prepare to manage this? It's not something you, that you wish to have or suddenly it appears, no, it needs to be managed. And the last one that I'm going to dis describe Social license as a market value contributor. It's very important because I am in Toronto where the stock exchange in Toronto is one of the, the most important stock exchange to raise money for exploration. I think 60 or more, 70% of the global exploration is, is financed in Toronto. But anyway, those are the four topics. The first one, the beginnings of this concept, it started with early management. I heard about in, in my early management courses in, in, in university, in college, about business legitimacy. So a business is an entity it is a, that needs to be created according to the country's laws or, or that have to create bylaws and must be enacted by law. So you need to go to a registry by the government, the state to say, okay, I want to create a business, this is my name, these are my shareholders, or this is my management team. And you, at that moment, you are starting this. So that's the theory of management. The corporations cannot be determined by economic and technical factors alone, but the only aspect to be transforming uh, resources, whatever, or providing services, requires political and social factors. There is nothing that the business is going to do that is in a vacuum, unless that you go to the moon or something like that. No? But here we are always interacting with laws, regulations, uh, people, unions, whatever political and social factors are present in the corporation activities. And sometimes those political and social factors can become more deterministic in certain industries than others and extractive industry, oil and gas and mining, are those kind of, where social and political factors are very, very, very critical in, in, in the day-to-day -day of this um, industry. Legitimacy is called into question in, in extractive industries all the time. I just came back from Peru uh, last week. Again, the major project from Anglo American, Quellabeco, that you must surely, you must no, it's a starting. Now it's been challenged because the local committee, they don't believe that Kayabuki is not going to use the water. The very few sources of water they have. So there is a question now into the legitimacy. If the government issued a license to Kayabeko to America in the right way, or, or they are sacrificing the water for the people. And social political risk management is important. So those are the aspects of the beginning of the social license. It's a concept or a metaphor. My, my is 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 not a theory. It's not that there is not a if you want academic definition, but in the in the, the bottom of this is the stakeholder networks needs ongoing acceptance, approval, or identification with a specific project. So the ongoing acceptance by the communities happens when you go where 
no other activity like yours has been before. So if I go to a rural community in Peru, Bolivia, wherever, and I start in a, a, a hardware store, I have no problem starting my hardware store. I have my license, I rented a place, I have my inventory bringing, and I start opening my doors and start selling. But it's very different when you go there and you want to start a, a exploration. Uh, most communities, they are not used to have uh, exploration per se. They, they, now they are used to see artisanal mining, <laughs> but not exploration. So that, that's very different, that the president. So going beyond compliances is necessary. Others, they don't believe that you have a paper saying, oh, the government gave me the grant for um, explore in this 1,000 hectares of, of land. Uh, I have the license to make exploration. They don't, they don't take that for granted. No? You, you need to interact with the local people that they own the superficial land or they use the superficial land that you need to gain the trust. That's the bottom line for social license operators. So there is a definition, there are many, but this is the one perhaps more clear to me, it refers to the level of acceptance or approval of the activities of an organization by his stakeholders, especially local impacted communities. And here is the beginning of the story. No? How do we start? If, if I am not going to do a mining operation, I am going to do exploration. And believe me, from my last uh, five years working with exploration, Canadian exploration companies, for a rural community, the leaders of the groups in that community, it is impossible to differentiate for them at the beginning. You are coming here to do mining. No, no, I am coming here to do exploration. That's different. No, no, you come here with machines, you, you make holes on the rock, you bring samples or you bring whatever rocks, and that rock must have something important that must, must be mineral. So that's the usual, the, the normal um, uh, preconception of, of what we are doing. So that, that's why it's important to refer to social license to be need, needs to be deployed at the beginning of these exploration activities. So social license operates so yes, the idea for community acceptance to a proposed project. Yes, yes, I am coming here to do exploration, but I need your acceptance to, to let me access you now. However, it tends to relate in doing what is necessary to avoid public opposition. And perhaps that's the, in, in practice, this is the most distinctive aspect of socialization to operate. You only start calling it when, when someone is opposing your presence. When nobody is opposing, you don't need because you, you already, you're lucky. <laughs> you started with, with that approval of the people. But I, I would say in the 90% 90, 90 of the cases, no, everybody is happy with the beginning of something related to my exploration. So that, that's the way I earn a living because my job is to go to the committees, explain to them the difference and bring examples, uh, bring all the required uh, proof that this is not going to harm anything. We are going to do exploration. So instead of a positive effort for higher standard, it doesn't matter if you want to apply higher standard, it's not necessary. The only thing you need to know how to manage to get a trust of the people. Uh, I will explain with cases what I mean by that. So here is something that uh, these two um, Canadian um, um, professionals has created. Robert Boutelier and Ian Thompson, they, they live in Vancouver. They, want, they, they both are the one of the first, first, first one to create a if you want the uh, theory, theoretical uh, framework for socialized interpretation. They start with legitimacy that we mentioned before. If you don't have that, you get rejection. Then if you get that a step happen, then you move to the next one that means credibility and that means approval and acceptance. And when you have that for certain number of weeks or, or months, you then get the trust that allow you to keep working, keep working. And this is very important because the last level of trust is your exploration is successful and you have significant 
or interesting resources that you want to put to the market, the trust of whoever has interest to buy or join venture with you will bring value. It's very different. I have seen cases where very, very attractive assets, very, very interesting copper, silver, gold, but because the communities are not going to allow the company to come, it's, it's, it's there. No, Nobody is going to put a cent until the community agrees. So that, that's happened. When you don't have that and you have that rejection, it is what happens. No? You need to call the police or you are rejected and you are, uh, have some files and this is extreme cases. No? But this, the, the, the picture I am showing you is not one morning they decided to, we don't want money, you know, but this is coming from maybe weeks or months before. And the company sometimes believe that bringing the police, it will be enough. But sometimes if the root cause of the rejection is shared by the majority of the social group in the community, there is very little the police can do. It, maybe they can bring peace one day or two, but the third day <laughs> when they are gone, they will start showing their opposition to your exploration project. And you have also these cases where uh, this is a very old uh, portrait, but I haven't seen this too much in the last maybe five years, but it used to be very powerful, no? Dirty gold. And that, this is the beginning of this standard for um, better gold or, or, or clean gold from Europe. I don't know if in Australia you have something like this, but bringing the, the the value chain, the, the trade, the, um, uh, bring the supply chain of the mineral very clear to disclose the whole thing. No? Again, um, NGOs, um, they are not doing this anymore. They, they get tired or they change tactics, but <laughs> they, they used to have this in the past. But again, why is, why is important the socialization to operate? It's a balance between social and legal. The legal is easy. You hire a, a law firm, you hire the expert in permitting, and you get the legal check. But the social is not such a such an easy thing. The acceptance of the stakeholders, the government is not going to do anything to, to get to put you in, in good face or good good position before the stakeholder. You need to do that. I haven't seen any government going to um, allow the company to do the exploration in peace or everybody agrees. No, no, you need to do that. The government can join you at the beginning, but it's up to you. How do you get the trust of the community? It's up to the company. So there is a decline in institutional liquidity. The governments in Latin America, you have read the papers, the news are changing to more from the right to the center to the left. And these left uh, governments, in, in, in theory at least, they don't like big companies. They like artisanal mining, <laughs> but and the middle middle sized companies, but large companies like Anglo American, the Rio Tintos, Vales, they, they, they are not so nice to deal with, that's too big. So uh, there is a political identities. Uh, if it's coming the company, coming from the capital of the country to the rural area, the rural area distrust people or companies come from the capital. They, they would like to see companies that have been there and they know before, but that's, that's not very common no? to, to see companies be in the area before starting the exploration. They, they just come for the exploration. No? Evidence of multiple factors, easy of organizing via social media. You can do that. You can open a Facebook, Instagram, whatever media you want. Use a smartphone. It's very generalized in rural areas in Latin America. Everybody, younger or adults, they have access to smartphones. Not with the very reliable, but they have access so they can know, they can ask questions. They can look, look at the websites of the company that is bringing the exploration to them. So they don't believe too much into the authority. The ministries or the prime ministers, they don't have too much authority with them. And the global politics to regulate 
the economic globalization. And that's something they are aware because there are NGOs that specialize, like in Ecuador, environmental NGOs are really dictating <laughs> the, put the condition to the government what to do with money. And they have the islands with indigenous groups and they have a, a agreements to, to put the government into really, really tough situation how to exploit or use the natural resources, mining or oil and gas. So it's intangible, the limitations and challenges for social license. It's an accident in nature, presents challenges to define, yes, yes. Um, but you, without, it's not possible to measure. So it, it's not, not, nobody is going to measure how, how deep or, or big or, or low is your social license to operate, your social acceptance. It's easy to understand when you don't have that acceptance. That's the moment when you're like, oh, we, we need to gain the trust of these people. So again, more about limitations and challenges, uh, a basic level of social acceptance might, might be presumed when the legal license are granted. Presume those legal standards are based on the government view of acceptable performance. Every environmental impact assessment in any part of Latin America assumes that you are comp in compliance with all the different regulations to avoid or mitigate negative impacts into the environment, water, soil. But that's assumption. You, you need to prove that. But more may be needed to meet all the relevant social expectations, local or otherwise, require judgment and in some case, pure speculation. So I will show you here about the technical and social field processes. Here is a classical example. To the left, you have your title that says, well, uh, you have applied for your, 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 your concession, your mining concession, <clears throat> and we have granted you. So this is the government issue you the title. You are for uh, three, four, five years, you pay the fees to do exploration or to do mining operations in this section of land in the country. So that's the legal. To the right, you have the location, the location of that, what the paper gives you um, permit to operate. And with those two pieces of information, you go to the field. And then you go to the field and, and you have to do this. To the left, you have to have many, many of these meetings and open air, uh, depending on the weather. This is one particular group, perhaps these are the farmers but then you need to go to the Paris Association, you need to go to the um, hospital, you need to go to the church, you need to go to the different social groups inside the community. It's a big mistake. Um, I have seen that many times, just going to the leaders, the leaders are happy with you, and then you start bringing your equipment. That's a big, big mistake. The leaders not necessarily speak for everybody. So you need to have this... Uh, consultations is called. Informal, you, you see there that people is, is informally sitting, asking or hearing or listening to you. And then when you really are satisfied with all that trust they need, then you proceed to move your equipment for do your exploration. Then you proceed, and, and this is the typical cases for exploration, you, you, you're drilling equipment a specialized work and the resource, not your core, uh, your, your core samples. It's incredible that the core chat is sometimes that people in the community believe, oh, why are you bringing those rocks there? It's the mineral, the gold that you, <laughs> that you are storing. And we need to bring sometimes inside the core chat people to show them with the magnified glass and everything possible. Listen, this is just to prove, try to see if there is any evidence of mineral 200, 300, 500 meters deep. So it takes passion, patience, it, it takes knowledge, it takes uh, really uh, understanding why they need to change the perception of exploration. And you only, only get to show people about this when you have the trust. 
If they don't trust you, they don't come to us anything. They, they want to, you to go or they want to uh, block you the next day if they are unhappy with what you are doing. Here is a moment when it's a real case, a picture I was a participant in Mexico, South of Mexico. The picture to the left is the uh, people in a hero. Hero is the owners of the land in, in Mexico. So these are the hero members entitled to make decisions about the land. And we're asking for renting one year of that land. Not everything, but the area that we have uh, interest. And we call a vote. We call a vote. After explanation, this is the most clear evidence of the free prior informed consent. In Mexico, it is this way. You see, there is nothing really fancy. We have put all that information weeks before. We went to the marketplace, we went to the laundry place, we went to the river, we went to the many places where usually they get together to explain about the project. But then we need to bring them to the meeting and say, we have explained to you what we want to do with the land, we want to do exploration, we need you, your agreement. And they vote, they vote. Of course, uh, this is the very, very good moment for, for the company because that means that we, we have the formal consent. This is the moment formal when the legal uh, document that you have is complemented by the social license. When these people accept your, your present, your offer, no? we are paying a rent, but we need to have both. Another example from high altitudes, once you have this agreement in place, you need to go. And this is very symbolic because uh, in the tradition for Andean countries, at least, the high altitudes are, are sacred. Uh, you, 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 you don't go there to mess with a, with a god that governs that high altitude. So you need to be very respectful the way they allow you to go uh, and do the exploration in those places. You see, there is a way, uh, usually they do a... Um, a cocktail for the for the owner of the land, for the spirit of the land. And if they are happy, the cocktail, the, the god of the mountain is happy with the cocktail offer, then you proceed and go with your exploration. No? But this takes time. Takes time, takes patience, takes follow the traditions at time. Sometimes the schedules is very, very different from the company, but you need to balance both. So again, aligning the social effects to exploration, in early stage, you have to the left, the typical activities, technical activities, airborne geosurveys, ground-based mapping, sampling surveys. But to the right, you have the required social aspects, permissions and safety, disturbances are compensated, and local hiring. Those are the most common social aspects social effects of the technical, the early stage exploration have social effects. Never ever, please uh, keep, I want to be clear, never ever think that even the coming with your truck one day is not going to create a disturbance. It's creating a disturbance. So you need to be sensitive to that and prepared to compensate in an agreement. Whatever disturbance is small or, or not small, you, you are doing. Then when you move further, resource identification, you need more time on the thing, mapping or sampling and drilling. And then you need to have the access agreement. Even for one month, you need to have access agreement. You don't need to go to the lawyer, but at least a paper signed by the owner of that land saying, I, Mr. Such and Such, agree for this company to access my land for one month. And I, in exchange, I will receive X amount of money or leave the land to start your coach house or your dorm or, or your uh, staff um, dormitories. And the contractors influence. When you bring contractors, you need to be careful. Sometimes contractors, they really come, uh, they, they don't care too much about the local people and that brings trouble to, to the company. How to prepare for socializing to pray? More engagement. Engagement is key here. It's always resources is doing in the right way, more trust. So never, never engagement moments are a waste of time. It's useful. More transparency is better two-way dialogue. And, and here it's not easy because sometimes a company, they send one day one geology, the second day send the financial management, the other day they send the 
someone from the contracting company and, and they need to be trained what are the messages because if someone brings a different message they starting to say oh but the person who came last week say something different what they're going to do so that's starting to perhaps create some uh, we need to be standard standardize the messages the quality and the opportunity information represent the sphere you need to provide information, be available to be information when they need it, not when you want it. And sometimes it's different. And disclose the project scope to be realistic with them. I am going to be here for two months. I am going to bring two machines. There are going to be 10 persons operating the machines and we need to hire people to help with that operation. We're going to take water from the, from some source and any ways or any, um, and use equipment we, we will be properly, according to the regulation, disposed. I have seen many cases the government come and they see really the conditions of the camp, the exploration camp, not, not, not a very good safety um, with the spills or, or with not good management waste. So is everyone responsibility taken from Robert Boutelier? Uh, yes, yes, it's everyone. It's not just one person. Internally, we need to include all the full cost for any possible stake for the conflict. How much it will cost if they stop this? We need to know the cost. We need to have a workshop to pull the knowledge with the stakeholder network. We need to train internally. And this is something very common. And until now, I have seen many senior executives in the mining company saying, it's better, Andres, it's better to keep low profile because that means lower our risk. It's the other way. If you want to keep low profile and you don't disclose things, you, you increase your risk because they started to imagine things or damages or, or you're going to bring extra gold. So avoid philanthropy. It's insurance. Um, you need to educate them and try to dialogue. Here the old, old saying is, uh, if you cannot, uh, if you cannot win with them, you, you need to join. <laughs> if you cannot win your enemy, you, you need to join him. Sometimes it's, it's the reality here. No? That's internally. In, externally, exter start early building as legitimacy with social capital and social contract, the agreements, the engagement, work with mutual goals with the stakeholders to transform the relations in something useful for them, use, useful for us. Here, here I have one example in Peru years ago. The local uh, regulation for, for exploration requires when you finish your, your um, drilling campaign, any number of platforms, you are supposed to close those and any path or any road that you open to reach the place needs to be closed. That's what the regulation says. When the company started to close the road, the local company say, hey, what are you doing? You open this road and we need this road. And we're trying to explain to them, but the government said that I need to close because it is a disturbance I created in the, in the hill, in the mountain. Uh, mister, we used to take our cows to pasture in the top of the, of the mountain. If you close this road, we will make our, our life more difficult. Keep the road the way it is. So we have to bring the people from the government, sign an agreement that we are not closing because we don't want to close, but it's beneficial to them. And the government agrees that that requirement will be waived, but needs to be situation no? where you, you need to be um, creative, bring the government and, and they can waive for you for this. So this is examples I can bring to you. Perceptions is very important. When people view something with a preconceived concept, they tend to take those concepts and see them whether or not they are or not. This is life. So knowing as local stakeholders is, is critical. No? Here, perhaps, Every one of you who has been working with large mining companies, they can hire consultants or have their own departments who, who can do that, can do this in a very, very deep uh, way. 
uh, cover maybe hundreds or dozens of communities in a large uh, extension of area. But for exploration, you can do the same, but in a, if you want in a, in a minimum way. You need to define who is, in my economic baseline, going to be affected or have interest to see what I am doing or know what is my presence representing to them. You need to identify those stakeholders. You need to have some kind of social X-ray of the communities, the level of social capital. There are communities that are very well organized. Nothing happens if, if the whole community could react quickly. In the last pandemic, you, you could see the reaction of these rural, rural communities reacting to prevent anybody from the capital from outside to come because they could bring, be infected and bring COVID to there and create a disaster in the community because they don't have access to vaccines or, or medical treatment. So they close. When they do that very quickly, that means they tell it, it's telling you that the social capital is very high, very high <laughs> because they react as one. Even they are different inside. As community, they, they react very quickly. The economic livelihood, important to know what they are doing for earning a living. The political mapping inside and outside the area is important as well. And the plan for trust enhancement and get free reduction. So those are aspects that even these methodologies are a must for the large companies that are starting to do brownfields or, or building. You can have it as a small size for your exploration projects. It, is, it should not be impossible because you are small or have a very reduced budget. This is one example, a real example, uh, of what is a community. So in the middle, it's in Spanish, sorry, uh, you have the community relations department. And this is a mixed site project in Mexico. Um, this the, the groups, the network of, of group, social groups are represented by a variety of, of reasons to get together. You have the school, you have the music band, you have the dancers, you have the church, you have the municipality, you have uh, farmers. But if you go yourself, go and walk through the community, you say, oh, this is a very small community. No, you, 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 are, you are grown. This is not a small community, it's a large community, but everybody is doing different things around the area. So this is the, what I mentioned before, the X-ray of the community. You need to know um, which particular group could be impacted more than others. In our case, the farmers are always the most impacted because we need to take land, we need to take water, so we need to be careful, with, but we need to know how many they are, what kind of uh, animals they have, uh, what are the traditions to do their animal husbandry. If you don't know, if you don't know that, if you don't take care of knowing that before you start the exploration, you could get into big trouble to the point that you could be neglected the, the social life. So again, one more case of uh, engagement. This is in Dominican Republic, uh, a barrack, barrack project, Pueblo Viejo. This a small community needs to be relocated, resettled, sorry. Um, and resettlement is, is like a surgery for <laughs> a mining project. It is very risky. It's not cheap. It's very expensive to re resettle people. Uh, but the most important, they need to resettle on their own will. And, and we spend hours, hundreds of hours in engagement, explaining, explaining about the new area that they selected for the new houses, the location of the schools, the health services, the water supply, the roads, everything. It, it's time consuming, but it's necessary. No? It's just one example of how to engage. So how to engage, uh, for me, the first five weeks of the exploration project could take maybe three months or six months of exploration. But the five, first five weeks are, are very, very critical. No? In those five weeks, it's like uh, you go to a job interview. The five minutes, uh, according to the experts, uh, define <laughs> you are going to be the successful candidate or not. Well, I made a, 
um, translation of those five menus of uh, interviewing and candidate with the five weeks for the exploration project to be judged by the local stakeholder. The dress, the handshake, the manners, and other the elevator pitch taken from the interview process of a job search could be very well applicable to the interaction with local stakeholders in the beginning, the first five weeks. This is something I really try to apply. It's, it's not expensive, but it's very important to, to remember this is a way to, to start engaging. Basic grievance mechanisms. Uh, grievance in, in a Spanish language always refer to the negative. Always is something is a big mistake or, or something has been harmed. Someone has been harmed or environmental has been damaged. But grievance in English has a meaning that it is it is a way to express your, your discomfort if you want. It, it's not a mistake, it is a way we are doing things, and you have the option to tell me is, is this a grievance that's annoying you? I have I need to have the the time to rectify that grievance, to solve the grievance. That is not rocket science. It is very simple. That in grievance, you need to have the right person, and you need to listen carefully, document it, and make the arrangement inside your team to make the grievance solved. So, but it's the, the more important thing is that all the people, all the stakeholders need to know that you have a grievance mechanism. Sometimes the grievance mechanism is only known inside the company. No, they, they need to know outside. That brings a lot of value because the first reaction is, oh, this company seems to, to be, to, to care <laughs> about what they are doing. Um, in Mexico, it was very, very important to have this publicly um, informed because that brings local communities in, in rural areas, isolated areas, they are not used to be listened by anybody. Not the government, not even the church. Uh, but if you go there, you, you need to have this way to be prepared to listen and, and to solve a grievance. It's very important. Here you have some uh, toolkits developed over the years. ICMM created this one. It's, it's in the third edition now, very useful. It's in Spanish, it's in English, it's in French. And E3 Plus in the early years of uh, Peter. It was also very useful. They discontinued that. But ICMN is still producing very high quality tools that I would recommend to you to have access. No, it's pub publicly accessed through the website. Here is a, a chart, a matrix where you see this column, exploration of the 17 methodologies of, of, for a mining project. The first stage is required to have two, stakeholder identification and the consultation matrix. I will be more, a little more, not too conservative, I will be adding a little bit of social baseline and the grievance. But those aspects and in the feasibility, you move further, you, you need required to move very quickly to, to comply with all the methodologies, construction and the operation, you need to have everything. The whole enchilada needs to be <laughs> in operation. So finally, we reach to what, what this means that socialized entrepreneurs is a market value contributor. I am sitting at the board of directors of two public uh, trade companies here in Canada, both are exploration. And we are very, very careful to see that our social license is in a good shape in order not to uh, damage our market value. Here I take the quote from Bruce Harvey. I don't know how many of you, of you know Bruce. He is, he's from um, Australia. He used to be with Rio Tinto. Um, Bruce became a good friend. I met him many times in conference. But he, he, he's the one who really, uh, coming from the geology side, uh, left that role and then move into the school to learn about social sociology. And he started to grow. Um, and this is something I keep <laughs> on my office at the field level in Spanish. What is required for us is the ability to work with the people and communities proactively and transparently 
and combine then that it is in it is in everybody's best interest for the company to develop the resource for me really this is the the win-win situation with this really you have a, a social license to operate to the square <laughs> Very powerful, very powerful, but very simple, but very powerful. It's combined, combined the local people that is in the best interest for them and for us to develop the resource. Otherwise, you always say something that open to reason. So junior in mining investment, um, taking from quotes from public releases in, in, in Canada, 20 whole programs, lot completing assays, to be announced shortly, that includes 77 meters millimeter step up. Today, we're finding gold. And these are the statements that really, technical statements about the results of your drilling operations, your lab testing, a size, and, but this needs to be complemented by everything about law, regulations, fully protection, and ethical convention. There is no way that I can see, oh, this is a very risk deposit, but then what else about the permitting and what about the socialized? And that's it. Uh